Hello, this is Matt from the Carbon Co-op. Uh, we thought we'd do a quick video for those of you who missed um, the uh, webinar on Friday. Um, so just a quick intro from uh, me about why we chose uh, Open Energy Monitor uh, as our kind of technical partner for this project. Um, and basically because we're looking at um, uh, doing pre and post retrofit monitoring, we need a system which is modular. Um, so we need to be able to monitor uh, not just energy uh, use but also energy generation uh, in the home uh, and also uh, monitor things like temperature and humidity uh, which is particularly Im important for us working with super, super insulated homes. Um, also because it's an open source project um, so there's a lot of development from um, people around the world um, so there are um, translations into a number of different languages um, so you've got kind of constant development going on. Uh, also, um, it's a very active project. Um, we found the forums very welcoming and very useful um, as a way of, of getting problems sorted out. Um, also, the fact that we have the ability to um, host the Emon CMS package on our own server with our own branding is something that we like a lot. Um, it also gives us control over the data that we gather. In terms of this project, something that we're particularly excited about is the development of the Emon Pi, which is interesting as the main limitation we found around monitoring is the ability to ensure uh, consistent data from remote locations. Um, so essentially, how do you troubleshoot problems when you're not uh, on site? Um, and um, the Emon Pi is a is a shield for the for the Raspberry Pi, so it just bolts straight on. So it's quite a neat package. Um, but also it gives us the ability to do things like um, have a, um, a reboot button which means that we are able to restart um, uh, properly without just pulling the power and potentially risking data loss. As the system is also uh, integrated into the Raspberry Pi it means that it gives us the um, potential to be able to not only update the software on the Pi and the configuration that we use on the Pi itself um, but also to remotely update the um, the sensor firmware so to actually do the Arduino update um, which means that we can potentially roll out new functionality or bug fixes uh, without having to um, to do site visits. So uh, another thing as you'll see here which we think is particularly useful uh, is the inclusion of an LCD display to the unit. Uh, one of the issues that we have um, around um, systems that we've installed in, in remote locations is, is that it's very difficult for end users to know what's going on with the kit um, should there be an issue with their with their dashboard or or if they lose connectivity in some way so having a system which gives um, basic information um, about how the system is working um, and highlights any potential problems uh, will make the process much much easier for us to uh, troubleshoot so um, I will hand you over now to um, uh, Tristan Lee from the Open Energy Monitor Project who's just going to give you a quick rundown uh, on uh, how the system works. Okay, I'm going to do a short demo of Emon CMS using um, the online emoncms.org cloud service that we host. Um, so we'll start by logging in. Um, we're going to log into an account which is uh, a heat pump monitor. Um, so this is the you know, the first page. This is just the the profile page. It's got the the API keys for authentication and um, some basic sort of usage um, statistics. Um, so data comes into the into this input part. This is where the data arrives um, in Emon CMS. Um, we have here node 10, which is our heat pump monitor, and the data is arriving every 10 seconds. And um, the we can see here we've we've set the names for the different inputs. Um, and on the right hand side, you can see the values. And at the moment, the values are not scaled. Um, they're actually sent as like a they're multiplied by 100 and then divided. They're multiplied by 100 on the on the sensing node. And then divided by 100 in Emon CMS in order to, um, it's just a way of sending the data efficiently as an integer rather than a float. Um, 
so what we've done here in the input interface is we've we've started by scaling the values so mul multiplying by um, if I open this one up here by 0 0.01 and then we've recorded them so recorded them to feed so there's sort of this two-step process of uh, um, first the inputs appearing in on CMS and then configuring the, those inputs and, and actually saying that we want to record them um, so once you've configured your input to record um, you can then go to the feeds module tab here and um, uh, you can see here no tan again and you can see um, these these are the lists of the different properties that we are recording so these are the feeds um, and I could just click on heat pump power here and on the eye icon and we can we can see the data so um, it's possible to zoom out over on time scales it's pretty quick so that's September 2014 to February 2015 and you can zoom all the way into the 10 seconds um, resolution and all the way out. So, I mean, that's quite an advanced view, I guess, to look at the data in that form. Um, and so one of the things we've been trying to do is work on ways of presenting the data, um, providing um, like uh, calculated statistics based on it or you know how much uh, energy is used per day by the heat pump. So I've got a, one of these. We've got a what's called, called um, like a, a custom dashboard uh, module here called My Heat Pump. And if I load that, we've got a nice um, graphic of the heat pump. It's currently running, so um, we can see the different temperatures on on there: the outside temperature, flow return, and the power input. And then below here, we can see the amount of power that the heat pump is using on a daily basis. And then the detailed view of all the temperature sensors um, on the bottom here. So you can do um, graphs which have multiple multiple um, uh, things being measured on them. That's sort of an example of one of the more um, uh, polished dashboard so like an automatically created well but pre-created dashboard you can also Imon CMS also has quite a um, powerful dashboard editor a visual dashboard editor if you go to dashboards here um, and I'll just create a new dashboard as an example and just edit this page and you can see here's the sort of the the editable area um, we'll create. We'll start by uh, creating a widget. We'll make a little dial. So we put this here. Select a feed to record to to show. So let's use a temperature sensor. So we've got the flow temperature going to the radi going to the radiators. We say that the mo let's, let's say that the that the hottest this can go to is fifty degrees, and. Um, the units are degrees Celsius. We go save, and there we are. It's drawn. You can resize. You can move it about like this. You can uh, change the size. And we can use, we can add a, a heading. A graph. Try a raw data graph. So you can build up. You can build up dashboards in this way. Um, 
and you can build up all sorts of different different kinds of dashboards and there's a couple of examples here of what's possible there's a multigraph there's multiple multiple feeds per graph um, different different temperature sensors um, we've got some older data on this account so this is a, a page just showing that Um, so I guess um, that gives you an idea of what you can do in Eamon CMS. Um, we're hoping to, um, like one of the main areas of or direction of development is to focus on creating dashboards which are which are pre-built, pre-configured, um, and that work um, with if you, if you name your feeds, so sort of standard names like heat pump flow temperature that the dashboard automatically picks that up. So trying to minimize the amount of configuration work that you have to do to get um, a system up and running. So you can install a, a piece of hardware for a particular uh, application and um, create an account team on CMS and um, you know, everything will, will work um, more out of the box. Um, which is which is the, the direction that this sort of my heat pump example um, takes us in compared with the with the sort of dashboard editor approach which um, there we go a couple of the questions asked um, yesterday in the um, in the webinar were about uh, the the Emon CMS API and how you could um, either send data to Emon, well both both questions are about sending data to Emon CMS from um, other um, other data services that the data may already be um, recorded in. Um, so I'm just going to go through a quick demo of doing this and, and where to find out about the API. Um, so I'll use, I'll, I'll, I'll log into Emon CMS.org here. I've created an account called Nobel. And um, we'll go to the input page, and uh, there's a tab. There's a, a link up here called Input API Help. If you click on that, that then lists uh, the available API. Um, so down here we've got um, this one here. We've got uh, input post .json node equals one and CSV. Uh, three CSV values. If you click on that, it's not an exa ample example API that will post um, post that data to Emon CMS. And now, if we go back to the input page, you'll see um, three values, new values have just been updated. Um, let's say there's another one here. So we've got a you can send data as a as a JSON string. So if I click on that one, we've got power two hundred. Um, Again, it said OK. We go back to input, and now we've got a new entry here. So you can get your monitoring equipment to send data to that API in that form, um, or you could create a script to to uh, relay information from another web service to Emon CMS. Um, and of course, you can install Emon CMS on your own server, um, and uh, in the for this kind of project, that is what I'd um, definitely recommend doing. Um, so, another another part to this, you want to you know, uh, when you're sending data to an email CMS installation, you need to authenticate that request. Um, this is done with an API key. Uh, the API key you can see in this example how it's appended to the end of the string, the URL, the URL string. Uh, the API key here is the right API key, and you can find out your right API key in the on the account page. Um, is this one here? So, yeah, once you've um, once you've sent data, the next thing to do, as I briefly went over in the last video, is that you you want to re um, log it to a feed. So you want to record it. You can go do that. You click Add here. And then um, now we've got a feed. So um, we can have a look at the feed API. Uh, the feed API isn't as documentation isn't as as good, 
but um, it goes over it, the, the essentials here. So we've got feed value. This will give you the last value of a feed. So if we get the feed a, uh, ID um, and you click on uh, last value and set the feed ID, well, it was zero, it seems. So um, that'll give you the last value anyway. I'll just give uh, one example of how I use the data API. So um, we'll we'll um, we'll go into another account which actually has some da data. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, look at a, a graph of the heat pump power here and. And just show you how you can actually um, get the um, the API call used to actually get to generate that graph. So if you go into developer mode in your browser now, um, and you click on the network tab, and you do a, and you click here on say a week um, time window, you'll see it make it'll make a request to average dot JSON ID start time end time and so on. Um, if you click on that um, that uh, request item and then go to edit and resend and copy the um, the contents there of the URL the URL and paste that into your uh, browser that will now um, print uh, the the result of that request to your browser so you can you can you can see how it works and um, uh, it's an easy way to get um, to test that data API. Um, the 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 other question that we had was around um, the number of inputs that can be um, that Emon CMS can handle. Um, so um, I mean, Emon CMS is. Um, there's not really any specific restrictions on the number of inputs um, per account. Um, it's all about your hardware, the server hardware that you've got, and how much um, how much uh, load that server can handle. Um, the 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 current the server that EmonCMS.org is running on is a, a four core machine um, with SSD drives and. Um, I think about eight gigabytes of memory, and uh, that is currently handling about ten thousand five hundred feeds and six hundred and fifty data points per second. Um, so um, it, gives, it gives you an idea, and that that's close to that server's capacity. Um, so that gives you an idea of what you can. Um, what you can handle with Emon CMS, um, and and the the bottlenecks are really uh, with this kind of application. It really is the disk writing. It's it's the more than anything else. It's um, uh, that's the thing that uh, takes the most time and the most. Uh, it, it is the if you have a, a huge number of writes, they can. Um, uh, that's that's the thing that's going to be your limitation um, because that's the part of the application that takes the most time is the writing um, SSD drives make a huge difference to the performance of Emon CMS when you have large numbers of um, large numbers of uh, users and feeds um, because they're just they 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 don't have um, seek times in the same way that uh, a physical hard drive has um, so that's definitely a recommendation to use SSD drives. Um, I think those are the main questions asked yesterday. And um, yeah, I hope that's useful. Thank you.